Okay, so I have one of my latest projects here. Um, this is an abstraction. It's a wood carving. Um, this image was generated um, through my research and through the models that I make. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, go ahead and work on this a little bit. And as I do that, I'm gonna to describe to you sort of my process and where I come from um, philosophically to arrive at this sort of thing. Okay, so while you watch me work on this carving, I wanna talk a little bit about the context within which this work was developed and created. I developed this approach um, while pursuing my graduate degree at the University of Maine in Orono in Intermedia. And one of the things I'd like to say about that program is that it helped me to understand that uh, really the driving force in the creative practice is sort of the inspiration. Uh, so that I don't need to, you don't need to concern ourselves with really with a goal or what we're headed for, or what we're ultimately trying to do. Really what we want to do is <clears throat> find our inspiration and then follow where that leads and um, let it develop naturally from there. And in the case of the work, uh, that you see me working on here, my inspiration really has been uh, towards understanding the origins and implications of human consciousness, the sort of unique consciousness that we as human beings, beings have developed um, evolutionarily. So in order to do that, uh, in my research, I've looked into cognitive evolution, and as a result, that's led me to start to design and build visual models that represent um, a lot of these ideas about how our cognition developed and how it evolved and again what its implications are for us today as contemporary humans. Um, and so as I model these systems it helps me to um, sort of investigate and understand how consciousness has developed, where it came from, what it's doing now to us and with us and for us or against us. Um, what the implications are that of that are. And as you can see, the imagery I'm working with or the results of these models are abstractions. Um, and this actually does say a lot about my findings and uh, my mode of research and what I'm doing, um, especially starts to tie into my Zen practice and Zen philosophy. Um, you know, the abstractions sort of are an indication of abstract reality that we find ourselves in, that we're generating constantly through our own consciousness. And by presenting these abstractions in the form of art um, to be viewed by an audience, um, it allows, it's allowing to reflect on the nature of these sort of things. So certainly the viewer brings whatever they bring to the work, but uh, there's the opportunity for them to sort of experience them directly in the moment and sort of contemplate the abstract nature of them, meaning to understand them as they exist, as they are, without trying to add a narrative or decipher the code, so to speak, or to sort of figure out where it all came from or what it means. Um, uh, the very fact that that information isn't available to the viewer um, is the point. It, it's the point that the work is creating an opportunity for the viewer to experience their own awareness directly, unencumbered by concepts and ideas. So as I research the work and I develop the models and I work through the ideas and the concepts um, and I practice Zen uh, in conjunction with this, then I've started to realize that <clears throat> um, that whole idea, the whole process of thinking and um, contemplating and stuff that it, it it's important and it's part of who we are as humans and as I said before it's our evolutionary inheritance um, it, it's simply how we've evolved and how we've developed and how we function um, however it ultimately doesn't lead to a sort of great insight um, and you know insight is really what I'm interested in it's really why I pursue my art